and I'm Rain, your guide to Milwaukee's music scene. Today we're sitting down with a few local artists who you may not have heard of before. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. This is TMU. touch with some of Milwaukee's hottest local bands and ask them a few questions about what it's like to be in the city. First, let's get to know them a little better. Hi, I'm Brad Stefik. I play bass for Fault Line Empires. I scream sometimes and I sing sometimes as well. Our band got started a couple years back. Uh, it was like in between, in between bands. I just left a different band that I was in and I wanted to start something new. So I called our, our singer Jordan and he was all down for it. And I called the drummer, and he was down for it. And then we suggested Wade, and we suggested uh, Ryan, who's not here. This is Wade, by the way, everybody. Hi. Uh, Ryan, Jordan, and now Clay, who's in the band, is as the new drummer. Take 15. My name's Ryan Gardner, and I play guitar in the band Icarus Down. My name is Jonathan Ferrer, and I sing and play guitar in the band Icarus Down. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Ryan Gardner and I play guitar and piano in the band The Last Rhino. My name is Chris Schwab. I sing and play guitar. Hello, my name is Travis Thorpe. I play the bass guitar. Hi, my name is John Keller. I play the drums and I like to spend money. We've been uh, playing as the last Rhino for going on two years right now. John, myself, and Ryan uh, have been the core members of it for those two years. Uh, recently, Travis joined about halfway in playing bass guitar. And uh, I guess our music would be described as independent rock and roll. We bounce all over the place uh, with different influences and styles. How could you do it to me? How could you cheat on me? Are we ready now? Yeah. Oh, I almost forgot who I was I there we were doing. Uh, My name is Zeno. I've been living in Milwaukee for 28 years, hard to believe. And I've uh, enjoyed playing the uh, Bad Boy Band and all my various projects. Uh, and uh, it's fun to be here. And here's uh, Steve Grimm. Yes, I am him, Steve Grimm. And I want to thank all the people that have come out to see us. And, Please come and see us at the Sleigh Riders. That's one of the best shows you will ever see because it is kind of a cumulation of all the great talents here in Milwaukee. And hopefully we'll see you at Summerfest or Stay Northern fair. Lights or someplace. We'll see you soon. Thanks. When starting a new band, it's hard to make yourself stand out to club owners. So we asked the guys what it takes to get a gig in the city. So basically when we started out, we just kind of asked around people we knew. We met with some people that could help us out getting gigs around the local bars. Um, Basically, we, we took anything we could get. Well, we've laid a lot of groundwork in the past, and we know the right people, and we know how to push the right buttons, baby. But that really is part of it. It's not what you know, it's who you know in this business. And the same is true of Summerfest, and many of the gigs, actually. You better be able to smooth, and if you can't toot your own horn, sometimes nobody else will do it. So you have to be a little aggressive in this business in many ways. So sell yourself is really important. It's always good to have promotions for yourself. You need a picture, a song list, a recording if possible. Video is excellent. You want to go into some of these clubs or some of these venues, present yourself in the most professional way you can. That's your best bet, really. There are agencies you can work with, a number of them here in town, uh, all of them pretty good. And uh, if you want to do it yourself, you got to be willing to go out there and, and work it. Self-promote, yep. really. You got to do it. Sometimes what you got to do. <laughs> Promoting is probably the only not fun thing about it because you're just constantly there going, here's a show. And like at first you're all excited, you know, and I'm all excited about it, but then I'm like, after like an hour of doing it, it's just like, oh man, this is, this is too much work. But you still do it, you still go through it, you know, because that's what I want to do. The music community in Milwaukee is as diverse as it is large. So we asked the guys what it's like to interact with other groups. Um, it's really nice to have uh, Friends in the business per se, <laughs> they uh, they'll help you get your name out. You help them get theirs out. Play shows together. 
it's a uh, yeah it, it's a really it's a really tight knit community for the most part. It's really really diverse, but mm-hmm. it's it's really hard to play any type of show with any other band outside of like your very random your groups and set genres. Some genres. Yeah, I mean, and like each venue has their own like genre. The rave actually the only good thing about the rave is that it's really the only place that in the Miramar where it has any genre can any, play yeah. any anything doesn't matter what you play i would say there's a good sense of musical community here uh, we do have been doing a show for about many many years over 20 years now called the sleigh riders which is a benefit which includes at least 40 musicians plus a couple of opening acts pretty much everyone knows everybody and networks and people are willing to help each other out i'd say yeah it's a very good sense of community here in Milwaukee. it's, it's a good music town really I don't think it is what it used to be. There used to be many, many more clubs, more variety, and it was easier for musicians to get into those clubs. But going back to what we had talked about before, if you can go out and promote yourself, it sure makes your job a lot easier, right. and the club owner's job a lot easier. But the music community in Milwaukee is pretty good, actually. I think it's there's a lot of, nice. There's a lot of good bands out there. Yeah. A lot of people that, like, like to follow the local bands and yeah. kind of like push them and there's a lot of good musicians coming out of Milwaukee and a lot of good music in general that I think kind of goes uh, kind of gets pushed under the rug but but I think the music community the music community in Milwaukee is great I think it's fantastic we asked the bands what it's like playing out to other cities and how it differs from playing to their usual crowds we have uh, we ventured out of Milwaukee from time to time uh, some cities we've hit are Chicago, Madison, Whitewater, Stevens Point, Sheboygan, Sheboygan Mac- Mequon. Mequon, Pewaukee, Cumberland, the big three. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's nice getting out of town sometimes yeah. if, if you have uh, a, some sort of a fan base there, some friends already there to come out. Whitewater was a, a good place for that, and Madison. Mequon, too. Mequon was also huge. But Stevens Point... Um, Chicago. Chicago was cool. Yeah. It was cool to be there, but there weren't a lot of people. Right. There. Uh, Whitewater had the most people, I think, um, just because we had a lot of people that we knew from that was going to Whitewater to the college, and then we knew from high school. Um, Preschool, in my case. And then just plugging it on uh, Facebook and stuff like that. It's good to go to Got places to where yeah. friends are. Um, yeah. No one, no one really knows who you are when you play the other cities. Uh, n- obviously not in your hometown. Like, yeah, a couple people know you because we touched on before with the whole, you know, like getting to know other bands and their their fans. But when you play like a show in your hometown, like the majority of the people that are there are there to see you, mm-hmm. and it's really fun and it's comfortable. When you go on the road and you play shows like in Illinois or Madison, you never know who's gonna show up. You have no idea the situation, especially if you've never been there. It's like, all right, well, right, here's a new place. Let's see how this goes. Like we. I think, the, yeah, the farthest we've gone for a show is to the Twin Cities. Yeah. We, we've been on the road some, actually quite a bit. Uh, not as much anymore right now. We stay pretty close to home. But we've toured, uh, what, the Southeast. We've done uh, we've done um, a lot of shows in a lot of places. There are problems, you know, logistics, a lot of traveling, whatever. But we, we like it. We, we enjoy being on the road. Some people don't want to be on the road. We, we like it. Now, originally, when we had this first invited artist contract, we had pretty much kind of blanche, and they sent us here and there. We thought we were going to be the rock stars of the future, and everybody was watching. A little did we know that there's a lot more people out there in California than, than we realized, and everybody was out selling, at that time, cassettes, now it's CDs and DVDs. But we certainly did our, our share of traveling, and for a musician to go see San Francisco and play there, or New York and New Orleans, virtually that's what we were able to do. We didn't realize how lucky we were at the time. But it was a ball. It really was a lot of fun. And when you're young, you can do that. You can live on peanut butter. But personally, we're a little more restrained these days, a little more country gentleman, shall we say, and trying to be a little more, well, not gentleman, I won't say that. But, you know, just trying to pick and choose the right times to play and where to play. But if the right gig comes up, we're certainly going to do it. In my other band, we, we played in Madison quite a bit, just yeah. like from experience. As far as like playing out in Madison and playing in Milwaukee, I love playing in Milwaukee a lot more. Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, some of the venues are a little bit better around here, I think, in my opinion. In Madison? Yeah. Where did you usually play? The Annex and okay. The Loft. And Annex uh, is all right. I played there once. Yeah, the Annex isn't bad, but I mean, you know. 
I'd probably rather play Linemans. Right. <laughs> True. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Running a band is a lot like running a company. It takes a lot of work to keep it going. We asked the guys how they handle it. There are any number of ways you can do it. You know, basically any way you can. If you can get somebody to to back you, that's one thing. If you can save up your pennies, whatever you got to do, you can either play for it, for, pay for it from uh, the shows that you play. Uh, whatever you can do to make to make it work, you can work. Sometimes you can work a deal with the studio, and then do a spec project. Spec and basically, what they mean is they will front you the time or a certain percentage of the time or a certain percentage of the cost sometimes it's a hundred percent in return for uh, a return whatever you sell so there's a lot of ways to do it it can it can go any number of ways basically any way you can do it is good yeah my mom used to have a lot of money so she used to put all the money in the recording and all those recordings are in the back of her trunk right now she's down there she sells fish out of the back of a truck and everyone saw she's able to sell a CD there you go um, when it comes down to like equipment for the band, we all buy our own things and we, we all have jobs. So we work and we you know pay for our own stuff. Um, the money that we make with the band, we usually put back into the band, uh, back into the business and we create things like business cards or marketing or we use it for studio time or um, giant posters. Right, marketing. Yeah, so, anyways, uh, as far as studio time, um, I, I work at another studio in, in Bayview owned by Justin Perkins, and it's called The Mystery Room, so sometimes I, I'm able to get some time there for us to work on our music. If not, um, I have some friends. Uh, Jay Christopher Hughes helps us out a lot. He's actually producing our new album. And uh, Odds and Ends for studio time, but yeah, we all pay for our own stuff. We all, you know, we all have day jobs, so. Uh, as far as, as making money playing in this band, like, no, we don't. I mean, we're all, no. we all work full-time no. jobs where gear comes from our, you know, money from our jobs. Like, I, I've bought enough gear in the last year that there's, I mean, I'm way in the hole if you really count that yeah. against the money we've made. I mean, we're lucky to get gas money, really. Uh, it's, I don't know. Don't start a job. Don't start a band because you want to make money. Uh, maybe if you're a cover band, unfortunately, people are willing yeah. to come out and see cover bands. And I mean, unless you're a cover band or you're willing to give up everything and somehow can do that, like you're not paying rent or something, you know, yeah. living with your parents, like, and which, which devoting your which life to music, seems which seems to work for it, yeah. I mean, some bands like, but I mean, that's you know, there's, there's so many bands out there that like, it's such a gamble that yeah, you know. But I mean, like, yeah, I mean, and, like, most of us don't make that much money anyway. So, like, I mean, I, I have the same, I have the same setup I've had for probably, like, eight years, maybe seven years. I mean, I got a new bass, like, a year ago, but I already broke it. So, like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, using my old bass again, which, like, goes out of tune very randomly. Like, it usually stays in tune, but, like, it'll be a random time where it'll just go out of tune. I'll be like, hmm, that's wrong. And I'll yeah. back to my tuner and tune it, and it'll be fine. It has, like, a buzz and, like, I don't know, it's, it's a mess. I just don't have enough money to uh, get it fixed, my new one fixed. I want to get yeah. both of them fixed, but, yeah, you if, know. It, yeah. if we were doing this for money, I would have quit by now. Yeah, if we were doing this for money, I, I think I would have quit probably my freshman year of college, which was a long time yeah. ago. I mean, I just, you know, of course I'd like to get a record deal and yeah. be able to live off of playing Who music, wouldn't? but... And yeah, I mean, who wouldn't, if, if you do this at all, I think you'd like that. But, you know, I, I, I'm i pretty happy just being a weekend warrior, yeah. you know, work my nine to five and then like, you know, play shows on the weekends and practice. Yeah, like, and I, I just like playing shows. I, I like performing, you know. I think, I think getting lucky is like the, the best way of describing it. As far as like recording stuff, getting lucky is, is that's the way you do things, you know, like. Oh, we got a friend that'll record our CD for really cheap. You know, oh, we yep. got another friend that'll that can design some stuff. Oh, another friend that'll help us play here mm -hmm. and there. Like, getting lucky, I would say, is like at least half of it, if not more, of yeah. like being able to pay for stuff. You know, like it. And we we consider it a good night when we have enough money to pay for gas. <laughs> like that's like that's mm -hmm. the hugest thing. Like, we don't care if we don't make anything. We just want to get this van back home. You yeah. know, we just want to have fun and put gas in the van <laughs> without it breaking you know, down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If we made more money, maybe we could buy a better van, too. <laughs> we could buy a bus. 
<laughs> yeah. We hear a lot of news that the internet is destroying the music industry, but how is it affecting these small-time bands? Uh, MySpace, but especially Facebook, has been amazing for uh, us in the music industry, I guess, just because um, it's so easy to get your gigs out there. and gets, You put it out there, and then they'll send the invitation to all their friends, and they'll send it to their friends, and before you know it, you'll have a whole bunch of people there. So that's been really great for us. And then, of course, they send it to their friends. But if, if there's any aspiring Last Rhino fans out there, I don't want you to be fooled. We did have Carl Winslow as our photo for at least a month. It might still be up there right now. So if you see that, don't shy away. Just uh, click add. We'd love to have you on our team. <laughs> Facebook. Facebook's helped us out a lot. We've, uh, yeah. We promote all our shows on there. We have a fan page on Facebook. We have a fan page on MySpace. Uh, we've been using Reverb Nation a little bit to get our music out there. Uh, recently, we took a lot of music off, though, because we're working on professional recordings, so kind of want to get the demos out of people's minds. Uh, we did create a sampler. Jonathan created yeah, a sampler right, track sampler. that's got like all the songs we have demos of, and you just splice it up into different sections between the songs, give you a little taste of what we sound like. Mm -hmm. I think the internet has had a... Uh good and bad effects for bands i know i remember before the internet was like really huge i, I felt like it was easier to just like it was it was easier for bands as far as getting getting money and getting being able to do stuff only because the only way to find out about a new band was you had to go and you had to see the show like that was like the only way possible like back in the day it was it was like you had to buy the cd you had to go you had to buy a cd and discover them then you had to go watch them where with internet, this I mean, this this is the only bad thing. With, with the internet is you know you can easily find anybody, anybody on MySpace or Facebook listen to and three listen or four to people beforehand. And, like, eh, yeah. I don't even want to see how good they're live because I already heard their CD, you know, or I don't, you know, I already basically know everything about them right now. There's there's no there's nothing mysterious about it. Like before, there's always just a little bit of like mystery, like oh, what's gonna happen? You know, what mm -hmm. these guys look like? What are they? You know, what they sound? Um, the, the good thing with the internet is that a lot more people can hear your music now. Mm -hmm. That's the good side. So it's, it's easier to just share a link, you know, on yeah. Facebook. Like, yeah, my band. Hey, check, check this us, out. Check yeah, us out yeah. here. And, and so send I, out, like, event invites yeah. to MySpace or Facebook friends. Like, hey, we're playing yeah. a show here. It's, it makes it a lot easier, easier to promote. It makes it easier for people to hear your music. It makes it easier to kind of, I don't know, network with other bands and stuff. Like, it's kind of cool. You know, like, yeah. on MySpace is putting top friends. Like, all the bands we play with a lot, you know, like... Clueberries, Look yeah. I'm Burning, like, you know, put them in our top friends, and I mean, I, I think that's actually kind of cool for the music music industry in general, like going oh, to I bands, MySpace pages I that I really, like, and I think seeing it's really like, great for the oh, they're scene. top friends with these guys, like, let's yeah. check them out. Like, I've done that recently, and it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's I think it's great. Yeah, it's great for the local scene. Not so good for you know, big big record labels and stuff like that, obviously. But now with like the the whole you know iTunes and everything, like, you know, more people will be like, oh, I can buy this song, and it's not so bad. Like, the record company's starting to make a little more money out of it now because they're realizing that, you know, people will pay a dollar if they really want to, you know, hear a song. Mm -hmm. They want to put it on their iPod or whatever. They'll do it because it's, it's nothing now, you know. You don't have to go anywhere. And, yeah. yeah, you just sit there and, you know, listen. Does that work? That works. Finally, we wanted to know what motivates these artists to get together to create music and perform shows. Graphic designing when I was 19 or whatever, right out of high school, and uh, and I enjoyed it. But that was kind of like the point in my life where I realized I wasn't doing what I loved and I wasn't following what I loved. And I always had music involved in my life. My my dad was uh, a traveling musician and uh, traveled all over the country and all over the world. And um, and I've just, it, my mom plays instruments and she sings and it's kind of just something that I've always had in my family, like in my blood and the kind of family that I have grown up with has always been uh, just very nurturing of who you are and you know, you being very comfortable with yourself and um, just feeling very natural at doing what you do. And we've always been a very artistic, musical, musically driven family and uh, 
I think it was like at that point in my life when I went to school for graphic designing that I realized that I wasn't doing what I loved and I wanted to do music for the rest of my life. And I kind of like made the decision like then and there. And I, and I, I, finished, I finished graphic designing school and I, I got my, my uh, degree and came back to Milwaukee. And I, I play music just because, I don't know, I guess it's fun. I, I like playing guitar and like learning new things, trying to come up with new things, and uh, playing shows is really the ultimate payoff. I, I think it's fun to, you know, just kind of be like the center of attention in the room and kind of like just share what you do with other people, you know, and and with your band. I think, it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's such a cool kind of like friendship type thing that, I don't know, I think a lot of people miss out on that you kind of just get that you know, five people in our case, like, working towards one thing, you know, and it, just the whole process is fun to me. I, I, recording is a blast, band practice is fun, you know, practicing by myself, you know, just playing guitar is fun, travel, like, doing road trips is fun, I don't know, the whole thing is a blast, and that's, I think, why I care, don't care to make money doing it, it's just what I'd like to do, you know, it's, it's something to look forward to during the work week, you know, is to play music on the weekends or, you know, practice guitar after work. And it's a release from my work week. And it's it just, you know, yeah, it's exciting. It's fun to release. I, I enjoy creating music. I enjoy playing music. I enjoy all aspects of it, except probably for promoting. <laughs> but, uh, Overall, it's just awesome. I love being on stage. I love saying hi to people. I love people coming up to me and saying, "Hey, you did a good job." I also love people coming up to me and saying, "You, you suck." Like that's that's exciting too. It's like really cool. All right, I suck. That's awesome. But uh, that's about it. Yeah. More or less, just because it's fun. Um, there's nothing that I'd rather do, with the exception of a couple of things, than play with these guys, play some music, play live shows. Um, it's, it's passion, it's not intimate, but, um, it's, it's just what I love to do. Thursday, Tuesday, Friday or Saturday night, whatever it is, it's fun to be out performing for people, um, hopefully entertaining people, sort of feeding off the audience, and hopefully they're feeding off of us and just making a, a great night. And I also really enjoy creating something, uh, completely original, knowing that, um, the five of us put together our heads and it's something that no one else in the world could come up with and having that on a CD is something that will last forever and, and for me having that product is uh, a great thing. Well played. <laughs> uh, why I do it? Well, in a sense I've been doing it since I was little, since I was five I've been involved with music. I was uh, playing piano when I was five to like ten. I dabbled in drums, I dabbled in trombone, I dab dabbled in cello. Picked up the guitar in middle school because Metallica. I went to a Metallica concert and it just blew my mind away. It's like, I want to do that. That's pretty cool. Like, packed house, you know, like just a lot of energy, a lot of fun. And then it, that turned into just like, I want to learn people's song, like every all these other artists' songs, and then like got into like all all these other things, like beyond just playing the guitar, like like Chris said, like creating your own thing, and then finally we got into a band that we're creating our own music and you're creating our own like sound. That I'm like, wow, I haven't really heard anything like this before, and it came from these people because we all have different tastes and different styles, but we got together and our influences are s similar but different, and that's why we created such an original sound I think especially around the Milwaukee I don't, th I don't think there's many people that sound like us um, and it's something I want to keep doing for as long as I can um, and I just do it I do it I, I'm an artist that's what I do I make music sometimes I paint sometimes I take pictures that's what I like to do hopefully I can make a career of it someday just been doing it since I was a child and it always appealed to me. It's what I do, it's part of uh, my psyche. I don't know what else I would do except maybe be a criminal. Yeah, you do that good too. Yeah.
You know, there's something about creating music, particularly improvisation, that usually happens every night. And this is one of the few businesses that you can create something every night and kind of say, wow, I didn't even know I could do that. And it's out there. I mean, it's just so unique in that creativity aspect of the mind and the hands putting it all together. And occasionally it's very good. Not all the time. And when you can stumble on that, it really makes it worth it. And that, that's why I kind of do it. You, you get involved, in, uh, and you've been doing it, as Steve and I have, for many, many years. And you, know, you get involved in the business and, and the shows. And there's a physical part of it. It's, it's you know, it's, it's sometimes it's hard work. But every once in a while, you forget about all that. And it's just right back to where it was in the beginning. And it's about the music and it's about the way you feel and about the way you make people feel and how they react to you. That's all we've got for today. But before we go, we'd like to thank the bands who took the time to speak with us. If you'd like to know more information, we'll be posting their websites on the credits. Thanks again, and we'll see you at the show. This was TMU. Remember the way that you love me